Hi there, this is IGCSE Maths Tutors and today we're going to study a real life IGCSE Math exam question that tackles three subjects, namely trigonometry, significant figures and number bounds. Let's see what this looks like. We have a right angle triangle ABC where we're given angle C equal to 38 degrees and side AC equals to 7.9 centimeters and we're asked to get side BC. Now this is a straightforward trigonometry question where uh, angle C, the cosine of angle C rather, is defined as the adjacent BC, the side adjacent to angle C, which is side BC, divided by the hypotenuse, which is AC. The hypotenuse, of course, is the side opposite to the right angle. Now, uh, if we plug in the numbers, we straight away get cosine 38 equals to BC, which is unknown, divided by the hypotenuse which is equal to 7.9. Rearranging the equation to make BC the subject of the formula, we get BC equals cosine 38 multiplied by 7.9 and if you work out cosine 38 on your calculator, you will end up with BC equals 0 0.7880 multiplied by 7.9 which is equal to 6.2252 centimeters. And this is not the right answer because we're required to get the answer correct to three significant figures. So we round up the two, which is, which is followed by a five. We round it up to three and we get the final answer correct to three significant figures. 6.23 centimeters. We turn now to the second part of the question, which is a bit challenging. It says the size of angle C, which was given to be 38, is correct to two significant figures. And we have to find the upper and lower bounds of this number. Write down the lower and upper bounds of angle C. In order to do this, we have to clarify some concepts first. First of all, what, what do we mean by two significant figures? Two significant figures means two digits before or after the decimal point, excluding the zero that comes before the decimal point. So if, for instance, we have 0 0.123 and we want to find this number correct to two significant figures, it becomes 0 0.12. We don't round up this two to three because the number that comes after it, which is 3, is not actually equal or greater than 5. Uh, in contrast to this, 34.5 rounds up to 35, correct, to two significant figures. And finally, 1.27 rounds up to 1.3, correct, to two significant figures. Now, what is also the lower bound? Though by the lower bound, we mean the smallest value that runs up to equal a given number. So, for instance, if we have number 2, is 1.4 the lower bound for it? It's not, because we cannot round it up to become 2, because 4 is not equal to or greater than 5. In contrast to this, 1.5 is actually the lower bound for 2 because it's, because it's the least value that can be rounded up to 2. Now, finally, we need to clarify what is what do we mean by an upper bound. The upper bound is defined as the smallest value that rounds up to the next number. So if you want, if you want to get the upper bound for 2, we have to find the least number that can be rounded up to the next number. The next number after 2 is 3. So what is the smallest number that can be rounded up to 3? Can 2.4 be rounded up to 3? It cannot. In contrast, 2.5 can be rounded up to 3. And hence, 2.5 is the upper bound for number 2. Now, returning to our original question, the lower bound for 38, which is the smallest value that rounds up to 38, is 37.5. And 
the upper bound to 38, which is the smallest number that can be rounded up to 39, is 38.5. So I hope you found this video helpful and you understood this concept of the upper and lower bounds. And if you have any questions, please put them down below in the comments section. And I'll see you again in the next video. Goodbye for now.